Hey guys, if you're wondering why I now look like a dried up purple yam, it's because one, I dressed up for Halloween. I dressed up as the main character from the Netflix movie, Next Gen. Basically, she is this Asian girl who has the same exact haircut as me, just with purple hair. So I went ahead and dyed it. The second reason why I look like a yam is because this is just how my face looks like, so. I've been posting a video once a week like usual, but it's actually been quite a while since I last filmed on this dirty ass couch. I recently came back from my trip. I went to LA for a week. I made a very half-assed vlog about it. And by half-assed, I mean I literally threw together random clips and then put music on top of it. Quality content. I also thought about vlogging in Europe too, but I ended up not doing that. So quality content. I did have a really good time though. My friends and I went to Stockholm and Copenhagen and it was so far my favorite trip. Apparently while I was away though, some drama happened on booktube. Basically some white girl had made a video where she was very angry against black booktubers and other booktubers of color and dismissing their concerns and criticisms about how they are not as popular as mainstream booktubers because of their race. The video got so much backlash that she had to take it down, but there are tons of response videos talking about it because if you mention race anywhere, it's always gonna be a hot mess. Honestly, the only thing that I am offended by is the fact that this shit happened while I was away. The fact that this girl posted that video while I was away is racism in itself. This is a hate crime and I am offended. Can you guys do me a solid and next time you say some stupid ass shit, just wait till I'm actually here? But this time I'm not gonna bother doing a response video because it's pretty much old news and there's tons of response videos already and also I don't really give a fuck. <laughs> if I made a video every time someone says something stupid, I wouldn't be making videos about books anymore. Yeah, with that in mind, uh, let's go ahead and talk about the books that I read in October. I read four books and I kind of read half of an audiobook during my trip too. Basically, I am forcing my friends to read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. So while we were out in Copenhagen, one of my friends downloaded the audiobook and started listening to it on the train. And I wanted to relive that book vicariously through him. So I made him share his earbuds with me and we just had a really good time. We listened to it while we were on the train, on the bus, even right before we went to sleep too. Like we actually stayed up listening to the book and this was totally his choice too. The awesome thing about this is that my friend is not a reader. He barely reads at all. On our last night in Copenhagen, we were taking the bus back to our Airbnb and we just got to the part where Evelyn was saying something very emotional to her love interest and we were just feeling some type of way because we literally started crying on the bus. Silent tears were streaming down our eyes and he had to pause the audiobook as we just took in what was happening. That was my first time listening to the audiobook and usually audiobooks are like a hit or a miss for me, but this one was some good shit. And that's probably the most positive bookish experience I've had this whole month because the rest of the stuff that I read was not that good. The first book that I read in the month of October is Snot Girl. This is a graphic novel that is a contemporary fantasy, romance, fashion, comedy, anxiety, INFP, what the fuck is that? Are personality types like genres now? I don't get it. Anyway, I decided to read this book because my roommate had recommended it to me. And honestly, I don't know why the fuck she did because I did not enjoy this at all. <laughs> Cause I started reading this and I was like, what the fuck is going on? The art is very pretty. That's pretty much the only good thing about this book. Other than that, what the fuck is going on? Snot Girl is basically a graphic novel about a fashion blogger who is very stuck up, but she has a secret, which is the fact that she has a condition that makes her allergic to everything, I think. I don't know, maybe I'm just making it up, but I also don't care enough to fact check this. Whatever her issue is, the point is like, she's always dripping snot down her nose if she doesn't take medication for it. At first I was like, okay, this could be interesting. We have a main character who I assume is purposely unlikable, but she has some kind of secret that maybe can humanize her a little bit more. And maybe this is like a whole emotional journey about her embracing herself beyond the looks and appearances that she has held her career up to be. That was not the case. Instead, what I got was this weird 
clusterfuck of things that were happening that made no sense whatsoever. She spends the majority of this volume just hanging out with her friends, but also shit talking about how she hates her friends, but she still hangs out with them anyway. And every now and then she accidentally murders someone and that's about it. There's like no explanation for anything whatsoever. I couldn't even really describe the plot to you because it just makes no sense. It feels like random things are happening with no reasoning behind it and no narrative structure. The characters were all vapid and unlikable. I'm actually not sure if they're meant to be unlikable in the first place and I think that if you are not sure whether a character sucks on purpose, that's kind of a bad sign because if you want to look at good art, you would just look at a still image of it. You wouldn't read a whole story about it if it doesn't even make any fucking sense in the first place. I looked at what other people had to say about this book after I finished it because I was like, am I missing something? I don't fucking get it. And some people, at least the people who did enjoy it and continued reading on, has said that the plot makes more sense as you read the future chapters and it starts piecing itself together, which... First of all, I don't believe that. Like, I think this artist or author or whatever is just making shit up as they go along. But let's pretend that all of this clusterfuck is on purpose and they have carefully crafted this story. Let's just pretend that this is the case. If it were the case, I still don't think that this book deserves more than like two stars because a story needs to be good from the beginning. It can't just rely on you sticking around until future volumes or future episodes or future chapters where things get better. It needs to be solid from the beginning. So I rated this two stars. And then the next book that I read was Renegades by Marissa Meyer. I read this on the plane ride to LA and I had been putting off reading this book for a while because I mean, if you look at her, She's a thick girl, okay? I was intimidated by her thickness. And I also felt like committing to a book so thick is kind of risky if you're not sure that you'll like the book in the first place. But fortunately, because I was stuck on a really long plane ride, I had no choice but to get through the whole book. And it pretty much lived up to my expectations, which were low. <laughs> I wouldn't say underwhelming because I kind of expected to give it three stars anyway. So it was whelming. Basically, it is a YA novel about a society that is divided by hero and villains. The main girl comes from the villain side and her plot begins when she has to infiltrate the hero side and pretend that she is one of them in order to... <sighs> what the fuck was she gonna do again? Honestly, my brain is like not here right now. I don't remember details of it. The point is she just has to infiltrate the hero team and pretend that she's one of the good guys. The main guy is the son of some Superman knockoff who is like the head counselor or something. You can pretty much guess the plot structure of this book. It's a very generic book and that's why I rated it three stars. That being said, I didn't hate the book. I actually found it to be kind of a comfort read. The thing about books that have familiar tropes and a familiar storyline is that it's really easy to just turn your brain off and just just like let yourself enjoy a story. And I think I just read this at a good time because I was so busy during my work trip that it was nice to turn my brain off in the few moments that I had read this book. Despite the main female character being quite generic, there was one thing about her that stood out to me and that was the fact that she didn't use her powers at all. And her powers are actually pretty cool. Her power is that she never sleeps and she can put others to sleep with her touch. Um, honestly, same. Instead, when she would fight or try to outsmart other characters, she relied on her basic fighting skills. She's really interested in physics and she puts together these inventions and that has nothing to do with her superpower whatsoever. It's just an original character trait. And so I really appreciated that about her because I think a lot of times, especially in fantasy stories, the characters are strong because of the powers that they were born with and they didn't have to really work at it at all. But she had actually studied physics and learned how to fight properly. I am personally more of a fan of self-made characters rather than characters who were just lucky with the powers that they were given. I really appreciated that about her, um, but other than that, I don't really have anything to say about this book. The next book that I read is Fury Born by Claire Legrand. This is also a YA fantasy, but to be honest, it's pretty much more of a new adult book because some of the scenes there are like... 
Some people got naked, that's all I'm saying. It follows the journey of two women who are living 1,000 years apart and their journey to self-discovery about how they became queens. When this book came out, I was really, really excited to read it. I absolutely love the concept of following not one, but two strong female characters and the fact that they had different timelines going on that parallel each other was a really refreshing concept to me. The first 50 pages of this book, I was pretty hyped up. And that was because I started it when I was on a ferry ride to go see a castle in Stockholm. So I was pretty much in the fantasy mood and ready to indulge in this shit. And as I saw other castles in Europe, it made me even more excited to keep on reading Furyborn and just make myself immersed into that kind of universe but unfortunately um you know it wasn't that good <laughs> i ended up giving it three stars as well i just found it to be really slow and usually i don't mind books that have slow pacing but it got to the point where the pacing was just bogging me down a lot i read this book on my plane ride back from europe so that was an 11 hour flight and it would have been very easy for me to just breeze through the book if it had decent pacing but i found myself taking breaks in between because I just wanted to take a break from the story and I wasn't interested enough to keep on reading. And I think that when you're reading a good book, you would feel compelled to read the next chapter no matter where you stop. And that just wasn't the case for me. I also couldn't get attached to the characters. I think that if you're craving a fantasy book, this book could fulfill your craving. But other than that, it's not anything remarkable. And I would say it's pretty forgettable actually, which is a shame because I think the concept is super interesting. But I don't know, the execution is kind of like, meh. The next book that I read is This Is How We Rise by Claudia Chan. It is a nonfiction business book that teaches you how to reach your highest potential, empower women, and lead change in the world. I've been meaning to read more career-focused books lately. I was looking forward to trying this out, but unfortunately, <laughs> I also rated this two stars. I was just disappointed that this book was not as hard-hitting as I was hoping it to be. As someone who is very committed to her own career, when I am reading a book like this, I want to have tangible guidelines for how to elevate my career. Instead, I found that the majority, if not all of this book, was basically a list of mindfulness principles and just very sentimental writing, which is okay. Those things are totally valid, but I think that when they make up the entirety of the book, it just comes across as very fluffy. If you have practiced mindfulness before, like I have, then the principles listed here are really nothing new. So in the end, I felt like I didn't really learn anything from it. And the main thing about this book that really turned me off was the fact that the author constantly talked about God and her faith every other page. And it made me feel like I was listening to a sermon rather than reading a business book. I think that if you are a spiritual person or a religious person, you might enjoy the sentiments that this book preaches. But for me, I am not a spiritual person at all. And even if I was, it's not what I signed up for when I read this type of book. So I rated it two stars because I didn't really have anything positive to say about it. Also, there was this one part in the book that just made me cringe so much. How to build your dope squad. You will find yourself calling on different friends in different life situations, which is why you should build a tribe or what I like to call a dope squad made up of all these different energies. I am sh... I am 99% positive that nobody calls their friends dope squads. But sure, Jan, that alone justifies two stars for this book. And the last book that I read is The Sun and Her Flowers by Ruby Kaur. I usually don't read poetry books, but I decided to pick it up anyway because I wanted to read a book that I could just finish in one sitting while I was letting my hair dye purple. My favorite part about this book is the middle section called Rooting, where she writes about her generational experience with her family and immigration. And she talks a lot about her her endless admiration for her mother too, who has been through several years of hardship. She reflects on a lot of her cultural heritage and her family history. So I thought those were pretty solid poems. I think that there is a lot of rich narrative to be explored there. So I'm glad that at least one fifth of this book was dedicated to that. That being said, many of the poems are like a hit or miss. Sometimes Rupee puts together 
a poem that is very profound. How dare you mock your mother when she opens her mouth and broken English spells out? Don't be ashamed of the fact that she split through countries to be here, so you wouldn't have to cross a shore. Her accent is thick like honey. Hold it with your life. It's the only thing she has left of home. She is more than our punctuation and language. We might be able to paint pictures and write stories, but she made an entire world for herself. How is that for art? Like this is really beautiful. But then there are other times where she literally is just writing a statement that has end spaces. Or sometimes there are no break lines. It's just a single statement. I long to be a lily pad. I mean, okay. <laughs> You do you, girl. I don't know. I also found that the majority of her poems were kind of generic, but I think that's because half of the themes in the book are about heartbreak and relationships. It kind of feels like I'm reading teenage, college age angst, which I know is totally valid because I've been there before. But for the person that I am now, it's just no longer relevant to me and it doesn't resonate with me as it might have five years ago or with other young girls. I think I've just outgrown this type of sentimental writing, but I definitely can understand if it resonates with young girls out there. Because of that, and because I personally enjoyed the immigration poems, I gave this three stars. When I was going through my very toxic relationship in college, I actually wrote several poems that were about similar themes, and they are very cringy. I mean, if you don't like these poems, you don't even want to read my shit. So if anything came out of this, I think I will do a video where I will read out loud the cringy poetry that I wrote back when I was a very sad, angsty girl. So yeah, that is pretty much uh, the four books that I've read in October. Not a good selection. I don't really know how to end this video. Quality content. <laughs>